The death of One Direction singer Liam Payne sending shockwaves across the music industry and beyond. Local authorities telling Telemundo that the 31-year-old music superstar fell from a third-floor balcony at a hotel in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Devastated fans gathering to grieve outside the hotel where it happened. The police were called Wednesday evening after a report of a, quote, aggressive man who could be under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Good morning, everybody. In the hours surrounding his death, these videos and photos were posted to his social media with girlfriend Kate Cassidy. A lovely day here. In Argentina. Police are said to be investigating the circumstances around Payne's fatal fall and conducting Off an autopsy. Payne was a father to seven-year-old son, Bear Gray. He also recently opened up about She's rehab so and his struggles with sobriety. Right it's the first time I've ever put a drink down and got someone out here, you finish that, I don't need it, and I haven't picked one up since. Charlie Puth sharing this video of the pair together, <laughs> writing, Liam was always so kind to me. I cannot believe Such he is a sad gone. story, and guys, exactly what led up to Payne's death is still unclear, and authorities are really just hours into their investigation at this point. Hey guys, so if you haven't been living under a rock, you've heard about the tragic death of Liam Payne. And just in case you don't know who Liam Payne is, he is one of the members of the band One Direction. And at some point he was like the lead singer of One Direction. And One Direction at some point was a global phenomenon. I I would say the equivalent of Justin Bieber when he first came out with Baby 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 oh you know that song so yeah pretty big like i wasn't a fan because i'm i'm not in that generation but i i knew who one direction was and i knew that they were crazy crazy famous but you know at some point like all these young youthful boy bands or young celebrity stars fell off at some point and yeah it really caused a catastrophic effect as it does a lot of child stars on liam when it came to his mental health I was going to talk about one particular issue when it comes to this whole thing, but some more information has come out about his death and what might have caused him to allegedly jump off the side of a building. And so we're going to break this down into two parts. One is that what led up to Liam's death, what led up, led up to him allegedly taking his own life. People are pointing out his ex-girlfriend. Now, there's been a long, long history th thus far with Liam that he has been struggling mentally and psychologically and emotionally. Struggling with his mental health, he's struggling with addiction, so that definitely played a part. But he's had a string of failed relationships. I think he was married to an older woman of 10 years, had a kid with her, and just was kind of an absent father because of his mental health and his drug addiction. And then his recent girlfriend, she was coming out with this tell-all book of alleged abuse, uh, mostly psychological, emotional, and verbal abuse. And apparently she was gonna come out with this tell-all book. And there were reports that Liam friends actually contacted her and begged her not to release this book because they said that he was in a very weak and fragile state. And according to her herself, her own words, that Liam has also had also contacted her and said, please don't release this book. I'm not in a good place right now. I'm, I don't think I'm going to make it. She says she took that as a form of emotional uh, manipulation and decided to continue to release the book and do interviews and stuff like that. Now, look, I understand the argument that her story is hers to tell and regardless where he is at mentally and emotionally, that he cannot silence her. No one can silence her. This is her story to tell. But my problem with her story is that she went straight to podcasts, blogs, and writing a book that would financially benefit her and put her more in a public spotlight. Before dating Liam, she was a nobody. Yes, she was a model. I don't know how successful she was. But even after dating Liam, she only garnered about 600,000 followers on her Instagram compared to his ginormous following of millions upon millions. So this book and the public the public platform would have more benefited her and greatly damaged him. So for me, if you are being abused, I, I'm pro-victim, but I'm also pro-evidence and receipts. And she released this tell-all book. Apparently, she even went back and, 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 and edited it and said that it's half tell all half fiction, that this is fictional, that she basically changed all the names and even though she's going on these podcasts, hint, hint, the name change doesn't matter. I'm still talking about Liam. By saying that it's like based off of real life, but it's fictional, gives her the creative liberties to be liberal in the storytelling, meaning she can change things. She can exaggerate the story. She can edit out any of her things that she might have done. And so it's really kind of fucked up in a lot of ways, because again, this is not the entire truth because it's fictional based off of truth, 
right? And according to her, she has absolutely zero receipts whatsoever of, of any abuse besides maybe his history of having mental health problems and drug addiction i know people who have drug addiction and not every drug addict is an abuser okay so just because he might have abused drugs doesn't mean he was abusive but sometimes those things do go hand in hand right however i'm just saying she went to the public with these allegations with zero receipts and everyone just believed her because why i don't know she has a vagina and i guess because of liam's history of mental health and drug addiction For me, if you are in an abusive relationship and you go straight to blogs, podcasts, interviews, and books, it screams clout chasing to me, less victim, I'm just saying. And I also think we need to normalize the idea that people do find themselves in mutually toxic relationships like a Johnny Depp and an Amber Heard, which I don't think Johnny Depp was innocent in that relationship, but neither was Amber Heard. I think it was a mutually toxic relationship. And sometimes that would, would... that's what it is, but people then omit their toxic part they played in the relationship and only expose one side, right? So again, I'm not saying that Liam was innocent and he didn't do anything wrong. All I'm saying is it's good. It's a good possibility that they both were toxic in a relationship. And plus, she had no receipts or evidence. And if you love someone this badly and the abuse wasn't to the point where you ever went to the police, you ever made a police report, you never made a police call, uh, you never went to the hospital, nothing, then for me, if someone that I love is saying, I'm holding him on by a thread, and not only that person, but his friends are saying, please, just we're just asking to hold off a little bit. He's not in a good state. I would do that for someone that I loved. I have ex-friends and ex-lovers that we're not together anymore, and maybe they weren't the best friend or the best partner, but I love them enough that I'm not going to go and air all of their dirty laundry to their friends and family, especially if it wasn't to the level where I needed to go to cops or go to the hospital or whatever, what have you, right? And someone also pointed out, like, I'm pretty sure she's had past relationships that didn't work out has she aired all their laundry no so why Liam because he's famous and because it benefited her now the second half of this story is that some of more evidence came out about what happened before Liam allegedly took his life is that he had lots of drugs in his system including the pink cocaine that has become famous through the P. Diddy case because that's a lot of what he used. I thought pink cocaine was actually cocaine, but it's apparently not. It's just like a a plethora of different drugs in one and colored with pink dye and a couple of the things and it, the what they how they explain it is that it could be a different a different drugs a different mixture of drugs each time so just because you did it once and you were okay doesn't mean you can keep doing it and you're going to get the same effect right and so for the one that Liam took they said that the mixture included um ketamine other psychedelics not including ketamine, that's separate from ketamine, and also crystal and some other stuff, right? A partial autopsy has found former One Direction singer Liam Payne had several substances, including pink cocaine, in his system when he fell to his death in his hotel in Argentina. So what is pink cocaine? The first piece that we almost always see in pink or pink cocaine is ketamine, a dissociative drug, something that makes people feel like they're detached from reality. The second component is a psychedelics. Bill Bodner is a former DEA agent. He says despite its name, oftentimes there is no cocaine in the toxic mix of drugs, which includes synthetics like ecstasy, methamphetamine, and benzodiazepines. The drug, also known as TUSI, acts as both a stimulant and a depressant. Very, very cheap to make, and uh, they can kind of tailor the drug to what the drug user is looking for, the perceived effects that the drug user is looking for. Pink cocaine got its start in Latin American nightclubs as a party drug. Recently, it was linked to Sean Diddy Combs in a lawsuit filed by his former music producer, Rodney Jones. If you've used it before and it went okay, there's an assumption that if you use it again, it will always be okay. And that's just not true. Look, I've doubled and dabbed. I like my plant medicine and I've taken ketamine before. I hated it. I don't know why people take that. I, ugh, ugh, I do not recommend. I do not recommend it. I was extremely, extremely dissociated, disassociated when I take taken the uh, ketamine and I've taken other plant medicines, you know, acid mushrooms and have had disassociated effects. That doesn't bother me actually. But this was like, 
I've never felt this amount of disassociation before in my life. Like, I didn't even feel like a human being anymore. Like, it was weird. I didn't like it. I hated it. Ugh, do not recommend. And so they didn't mention that in the report that this is, you know, extreme dissociation. And if you take tuck and ketamine that already causes, or caused me at least, extreme disassociation, along with another psychedelic that can also cause this disassociation, I, I can't even imagine the mental state he must have been in, along with Crystal. And again, if you know anything about that drug if you take it you know a few days in a row it can cause you to have a psychotic break so having possibly a psychotic break from the crystal an extreme disassoci disassociate like ketamine along with another uh a psychedelic that can also possibly cause disassociation i can believe that he literally was just not even here anymore on top of that the mental and emotional in psychological psychological distress that he was already in because of his life, because of the book, the ex girlfriend, already having a long history of drug addiction. Like I can imagine that he just was not even in reality anymore and and probably was like being mentally and psychologically tortured by the substance that was in his blood and just wanted it to end. I've taken something like Salvia before. Is it Salvia? Yeah. And it was such a horrible mental torture if I didn't have friends around me at the time I probably would have jumped off I probably would have jumped off that's how badly I just wanted it to end you guys have to be careful of the things that you take okay PSA anyway guys let me know what you guys think of this whole thing if you think that the girlfriend had every right to tell her story regardless of the lack of receipts and the lack of uh, evidence and having the artistic liberties to kind of make up the story as she goes along because now it's just based on a true story and not actual true story do you think the public needs to be more responsible in their reactions when people come out with stuff like this and say hey we're horribly sad for you if that happened but we're gonna wait on our response till we see a bit more evidence and receipt do you side-eyed her the fact that she never went to the cops never made a police report there's no other evidence there's no other friends who can back this up she just went straight to the podcast interviews in a book this is scream cloud chasing or did this scream like a woman Woman who just wanted to tell her story and what do you think about the whole like pink cocaine um have you tried it would you ever try it let me know in the comment section down below please like comment and subscribe hit the bell to get the notification when i do upload all that really does help with the algorithm guys as you know my channel is extremely extremely uh shadow banned especially my long form videos so liking comment and sharing really does help and if you want to support this channel any further you can donate my paypal and cash app link is in the comment section down below or you can super thanks and you guys have an amazing beautiful day bye the death of One Direction singer Liam Payne sending shockwaves across the music industry and beyond. Local authorities telling Telemundo.